All right. How are you doing? Here we go. We are starting out with a story about the man with the world's largest penis weighs it to prove it's real. All right. Roberto Esquivel Cabrera wants to be in the Guinness World Record book. All right. I mean, I guess this is him attempting to weigh it. I don't know. A man who claims he has the world's largest penis has reportedly weighed it to prove it's real. According to TMZ, Roberto Esquivel, I'm probably butchering that name, Cabrera weighed it what is believed to be his 18.9 inch member on camera at his home in Salt Palio, Mexico, and it came out at two pounds. Mr. Esquivel Cabrera has said he wants the Guinness Book of World Records to recognize it and previously had it x-rayed to prove its veracity. I mean, who hasn't? But doctors are reported to said 13 inches are just excess skin. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know about you, but whenever I weigh my penis, you know, I deduct the excess skin. Hello, son. All right, the 52-year-old reportedly said it had caused him to lose jobs. What it caused him? His penis? And harmed his relationship. <laughs> Meaning he is forced to live alone and forage for food <laughs> because of his penis? Okay, he told a local news website, look where it is. It goes far below the knees. Son, I cannot do anything. I cannot work. And I am disabled. So I want authorities to declare me as a disabled person and give me support. Then I want to go to the guest to get recognition. He added that his penis was also too large for him to kneel in church and pray. Oh, well, that's a nice finishing touch. You can't bend down and pray because my dick's too big. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next story, which is a thieving fox steals 100 shoes in Berlin. And apparently he's not the first. Oh, there, there's a bugger right there. Why did the fox steal my shoes? <laughs> Sounds like the beginning of a bar joke. All right, I made that up. But anyway, about two weeks ago, Christian Meyer, a resident of Berlin's, you know, neighborhood, notices one of his new and expensive running shoes had disappeared from his porch, and he decided to investigate. Meyer quickly learned that he was not the thief's only victim, and a tip helped him catch the fox bandit red-handed. Okay, well, we're going to see. Meyer captured a photo of the thieving fox in his ill-gotten stash. Ah, well, I guess this says that this fox stole all his shoes. Still unknown why the fox stole the shoes. That, that is a mystery. And why this particular cannon had things for Crocs. Well, that's obviously. I mean, Crocs, come on, everybody wants those. But this isn't the first time that an urban fox has demonstrated a seeming shoe fetish. In August 2019, a fox in Melbourne, Australia, repeatedly visited a woman's porch and stole 
three boots over the course of a week. The woman captured the thief's antics on security camera, which she posted on YouTube. All right, it's 11 seconds. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> they had some really catchy music there. Okay, the pair of boxes in Kyoto, Japan. Apparently, this is going on worldwide. Pilfered more than 40 pairs of sandals. What the hell are these boxes doing all these shoes? That's what I want to know. Hey, where are the real journalists? I mean, you know, where are the journalists? I mean, this is a huge story. Where the hell are these boxes taking all these shoes? All right, it is unknown if the foxes were acting independently or if their actions were linked. Perhaps as part of an international shoe stealing cartel. Okay, I, I, I guess this guy is just, you know, being funny. Meanwhile, in Berlin, most of the foxes' victims have been reunited with their shoes. Okay, so they're just taking them tonight. And if the fox knows where the shoe is, it's not saying. Yeah, it can't say. It can't freaking talk. Okay, we're going to finish up this edition of the Aimless News with interesting facts about balloons. Everyone wants to know about balloons. Here, here's a fact. A balloon is a flexible, flexible bag that can be inflated with gas, such as helium, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxide, oxygen, and, oops, all right, or air. I guess oxygen and air, same thing. Man, I messed that up. Some balloons are used for decorative purposes or entertaining purposes. All right, like, wow, these people are telling me nothing. Balloons were first invented. Okay, here we go. In France, in the late 18th century, two paper makers, Jacques and Joseph Montgolfier, and discovered that when paper bags are filled with hot air, the bags rise. Quick to realize the potential of this, they began experimenting with balloons of very ma various materials, such as paper cloth and silk. Wow, that's a really awesome photo. They made the first public demonstration of a lighter-than-air balloon in June 1783. Oh, sign! With an 11-meter foot diameter balloon made of cloth lined with paper. Later that year, Jacques Charel, Charles I mean, come on, flew a balloon made of silk coated with a rubber varnish and filled with hydrogen, a gas that is lighter than air. These early demonstrated demonstrations attracted a great deal of excitement, and balloons were soon put to many uses in science, sport, and war. The rubber balloon was invented Finally, we're getting into it. it. Was invented by Michael Faraday. Hmm. Has he got anything to do with a Faraday cage? In 1824, during experiments with various gases, he invented them for use in the lab. Hmm. In 1825, Thomas Hancock, the pioneer rubber manufacturer, sold them in the form of a do-it-yourself kit which consisted of a bottle of rubber solution and a condensing, a condensing, a condensing syringe. He wasn't condensing at all. Latex balloons were manufactured for the first time in London in 1847 by J.G. Ingram, but they didn't enter the mass production until the 30s of the 20th century. Son, very interesting. Rubber balloons weren't manufactured in the United States until 1907. 
but their popularity appears to have increased throughout most of the 20th century. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? The first commercial sausage balloons were produced in 1912, and Americans began twisting balloons to make animals in the night in the late 30s or early 40s. Foil balloons appeared in the 70s and were more expensive, but held gas inside longer than the rubber and latex. They are also lighter. Today, balloons are made from rubber, latex, polychloroprene, and a nylon fabric. If the balloons that are filled with helium are made of rubber or latex, they will retain their buoyancy for a short time only. But it ain't because helium has small molecules which escape through small pores of a balloon. The word balloon likely comes from the Italian word pallone or pallone, meaning large ball. In the 1570s, balloon was a popular game played using a large inflated leather ball that was kicked or tossed back and forth. It was kicked or tossed back and forth. Okay. By the 1590s, 20 years later, the word balloon was used to refer to the ball itself. By 1784, 200 years later, balloon was also used to describe a bag or vessel filled with heated air or helium so as to rise and float in the air. Toy balloons are used as decoration and or advertising space. On New Year's Eve, thousands of balloons will be dropped from ceilings around the world. There are balloons that are longer and more cylindrical. These long balloons are often twisted and bent into simple or intricate shapes which hold their form when released. Balloon artists are people who quickly twist balloons into familiar or abstract shapes using techniques of balloon modeling. The fastest time to create one balloon dog sculpture is 6.5 seconds by John Cassidy at the balloon store <laughs> in 2006. Son, these are, uh, I mean, this went on much longer than I thought. I had no idea the balloon was so interesting. The largest balloon zoo, balloon zoo consists of almost 500,000 balloons in which a cheese by, okay, I can't even go there. Okay, anyway, the longest balloon chain measured 20,000 meters, good lord and was achieved by these people. <laughs> the stainless steel sculpture sold for $91 million. Okay, uh, I, that's another thing I don't understand. Okay, who, who's paying for that? I mean, uh, who pays $91 million? Okay, but anyway, that's going to do it for today's edition of the aimless news. You know what you can do to help our channel? You can like and subscribe. And then the most important thing is to share this video far and wide because, I'm going to tell you because why. Because the aimless news must be cool. <laughs>